And, and to set the tone right, let me start with telling a story. My favorite story, you may have heard it before, but it's relevant. The story is about the high school physics teacher who had a class, and he noticed that somebody in the front row, perhaps called Jean-Pierre, uh, was not paying attention. So he turned to him and said, uh, Jean-Pierre, what is an electron? So the boy scratched his head and said, oh, well, I, I used to know, sir, but I've forgotten. So the teacher said, ah, what a pity, quel dommage. Only two people in the universe knew what an electron was, you and God, and you've forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> so replace electron by spinner, and you get the tone of this lecture. So uh, what is a spinner? Now, I spent most of my life working on spinners in one form or another, and I don't know. <laughs> Only God knows. Maybe Dirac, but he's no longer with us. So, um, now, Hermann Weyl was one of my, my favorite mathematicians, and he also wrote beautiful poetic language, English. And here is what a quotation he makes in his book on the classical groups, which I'll read for you. It's about the, he talks about starting off with the spin representation, it says, only with spinners do we strike that level in the theory of its representations on which Euclid himself, flourishing ruler and compass, so deftly moves in the realm of geometric figures. In some way, Euclid's geometry must be deeply connected with the existence of the spin representation. Now that is typical Delphic vile remark at the end. You, well, you have to think deeply to what he means. By the way, vile, you know, in that classical groups, he has this introduction which he apologizes that he's writing in a language not sung by the gods at his cradle. You know, he was German, but he wrote beautiful English, as you see. 